No, I listen to it all the time. I tell all my friends to smack it raw. Podcast contains mature content. The views and opinions expressed by the host are not necessarily those of the host. So discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Smack and Raw Podcast, episode two twenty two. I am your host, the patron saint. Why? Why are you making that face? Oh, because uh, I was trying to keep count, like do like the finger like signals as we numbered the episode, and then like you said two twenty two. I'm like, wow, have I really been? off that much that like i was about to be like 223 i'm like oh i'm getting ahead of myself you know so what you should have done is 2 20 2 and then made him scissor yeah ah that'd see. be on brand see, this uh, is why am, you're the patron saints of podcasting i am i i am the host of the smack and rub podcast the patron saint of podcasting the warden matt ritter and as you guys can hear and i'm sure you're all very excited uh daddy is back home again uh I am one of the lucky people whose daddy goes out for cigarettes and actually comes back, uh, unlike most. So welcome back, Pornhub Poppy, Daddy Delgado, the Sultan of Spitter Swallow, SES Vince. Hey, I, I like that last one you added there. Uh, but yes, Matt, daddy is home. Daddy's back. Back on the show after my two-week hiatus. Um, FYI, you kind of got a little staticky over there. It might be my internet. So we have issues and I sound like a robot. Bear with me. Okay. Uh, I'm glad you sound to be fine back. on my end. Okay, so. perfect. Your end is the is the audio that actually matters. Oh, that's good. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, I sound fine on my audio. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Hopefully, nothing's wrong with my mic. Uh, but for everyone, um, like we said, Vince is back. And, uh, you know, a few months ago, Vince, you said, hey, I, I want to accrue some more nicknames because I want to get on Travis's level. And then, like, you stopped showing up for a little while, so I thought maybe if I just randomly every, like, few times he shows up, adds another nickname, he'll just keep coming back to see what else he gets. So, like, right. we, got, we got Daddy Delgado, and then we waited a little while, and then Reek gave us Pornhub Poppy. Mm-hmm. Now we've got the Sultan of Spitter Swallow, because you are the host of yes. the Spitter Swallow podcast for Creation World and for Smackin' yes. It Raw, that awesome YouTube series that you've been doing that's been doing great. No- I mean, you got 80 views for people just looking at you on fucking Pornhub. So, I mean, I mean, I mean, obviously the number speaks for themselves, man. Obviously, like the demand is there. Um, But no, uh, I wouldn't call it a serious series just yet because we only have two episodes in, but we will be having a part three, episode three for Survivor Series Spitter Swallow. So look out for that should come out Monday, if not at the latest Tuesday. All right. And as Mm -hmm. you guys can see. If you are watching the video version, Vince has on that Black Lives Matter hoodie because Chicago sucks and we got about a week of hoodie season and now it's fucking winter. Oh, hold on. We have our guest uh, as she's joining. Guests, you say? Guest. One guest. Guest. Our guest. Our guest. Her well, audience hello. Connected. There it is. Gonna be a minute. Yeah, we'll give her a second. Sure, but Chicago sucks because we only got like what, like a, a a few weeks of like hoodie season, and now it's like blistering cold. We got like a week of hoodie season. That's maybe it. at best. At, at best. best. But you got that Black Lives Matter hoodie on. Yes, I do. And then we always support Young Kings Wrestling and those Black Lives Matter T-shirts, which you guys can get at What a Maneuver. The link for the black and pink version is in my pin tweet at matt ritter that's at m-a-t-t-r-i-d-d-e-r um you guys can go there and check that out and it's important uh because as we always talk about this is still continuing and we see that now yeah. with uh kyle rittenhouse and the bullshit that happened with him being acquitted and all of that trash 
the biased ass judge. JJ, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. <laughs> Glad to have you here. We do have our guest JJ, her audio connected, and uh we got her in here. <laughs> it took a and minute. I wasn't sure if you were to make it. So we were like, we'll get started. And then when JJ pops in, we'll just throw her in. And luckily, you're just here to hear me go on a rant about Black Lives Matter and Kyle Rittenhouse and how much bullshit it was that mm-hmm. some dude went out and killed three people and got off. So like I'm going to do the gospel. That's all I'm going to do. Just rocking and hum. Walking and humming, JJ. Rock and hum. I'm going to I'm gonna say two quick things about it, and then we're going to move on. Uh, one is a uh, very bad misquote from uh, Trevor Noah because I didn't save the meme, so I, I can't quote it directly. But uh, basically, he said something along the lines of someone does not pick up a gun to go out and defend their favorite store. You're not like, hey, I'm going to go out and defend TJ Maxx. When you pick up a gun, you intend to go out to shoot people. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. And the other one I did save is let's be clear. If a black 17 year old had crossed state lines to arm himself with an illegally acquired assault rifle and picked a fight and shot three people, killing two of them. The trial would simply be a formality. He'd be in prison for life. And that's if the cops didn't shoot him dead there. Mm -hmm. And more than likely, he wouldn't have made it out of there alive, let alone to get in a trial. So if you're listening to this podcast and you haven't heard our stance on where we are about Black Lives Matter, or apparently I haven't made it clear enough, obviously, uh, I think it's very clear here now. uh, We not only support Black Lives Matter, that movement and that idea, uh, but we ask you know, this is not an act of patriotism. This is not somebody defending their home. This was a kid who went out and murdered three people and got off for it. And it's fucking bullshit. And his mother drove him there. Yes. Mm. So plain and simple, this injustice, this system that we have been talking about that has allowed these things that was the reason for the riots in the first place because of the lack of justice in the justice system and the way things are handled. And then this farce of a course court case is why we come on here every week. And we still talk about these black lives matter hoodies and ask you guys to go buy one donate, because we know that young Kings wrestling is taking that money and doing good things with them. So uh, please support them. Please support the cause and uh, be better. Yeah. I really don't have much to input on this other than just reinforcing everything that Matt said. Obviously, he speaks for not only myself, but Creation World and the Smackin' Raw family. I mean, Travis will tell you I don't speak for Creation World, but neither here nor there. <laughs> on this particular point, I feel like yeah, I feel like no, he he's with me. Yeah. Um. Ooh, I fucking deleted that too. Uh, you got anything you want to add, JJ? Before we move on to news and rumors. No. It's unfair that the justice system is was created so black and brown individuals aren't getting the fair justice. And no matter how much we try to do what's right, it still won't be seen as equal. We just got to keep fighting. Keep speaking up. Keep doing what's right, even when they don't see it and they do see it. And it, the time will come. It may not come in our generation, but the time will come. All right. Uh, can you turn your audio up a little bit when you switch to your headphones? You got a little hard to hear. I'll turn it off. I'll try it. It's for it's for a job. See, now that's that's that, way that, better. That sounds I was very for clear. My job. I tried something new. It's for my job, so I know not to use them. Yeah, tell your job. <laughs> tell your job to do better. Um, this is why I never tried anything new. <laughs> first and foremost, Becky did an interview. She basically called Ric Flair sad. And said that mm-hmm. he's just clout chasing with his uh, tweet about coming and showing up at the pay-per-view and how Charlotte's going to beat him and blah, 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 or beat her, all this mm-hmm. shit. Um, and I kind of agree. Like, the man has been a piece of shit pretty much his entire life, and we have ignored it for a very, very long time. And now it's kind of hard not to ignore it when the dark side of the ring came out and it was right there in our faces. Like it had to be accepted. Right. He's been out he of the spotlight. He show up. I'm sorry. Oh, 
Yeah, no, he tweeted at Becky Lynch saying that uh, he needs to be there to watch Charlotte beat her ass and Ooh. blah, 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 Ooh. all the stuff. And then Becky's just like, yeah, I read it. I had I typed something out and then I decided not to because honestly, it's just kind of sad at this point. Like he's done some things and now he's it's just trying clout. to get his clout back. It's mm-hmm. her clout. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. um. There was a hit list for 2K22 of the things that we're getting. I know the one everyone seems most excited about is GM mode, especially seeing as there's not going to be a fucking roster anymore, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Um, Jesus. Creation suites and all that fun stuff. So if you're still looking forward to the game, even though WWE has fired the majority of your favorite wrestlers, uh, I guess that's something to look forward to. I mean, they could just do a retro game with all the people that, you know, they've got rights to still like the stone Colds yeah. and the rocks and shit, seeing as the main roster is basically just Roman Reigns and Becky Lynch at this point. They'll play it. They'll play it with the, the older, the older wrestlers. It won't matter. Yeah. yeah. Give me like 20 versions of Eddie Guerrero. I'll still buy it. <laughs> oh, we know you will. You and, and well, no, I'm sorry. You're not a uh, rich. Holland stole your gimmick. So we can't talk about how many versions of Seamus you need. Cause that's dead and gone. Um, and then we'll the talk releases. About, we'll talk about that because I have something to say about that. <laughs> oh, uh, releases. We got more releases. Uh, they released all of fucking Hit Row and Tegan Knox. And Cash. from the list of releases that I saw, those are the ones that bother me the most. <sighs> the rest I can kind of understand and see. Obviously, Jackson Riker, everyone was asking for Jackson Riker to be gone. And WWE just yeah. finally just said, listen, we're probably just sick of hearing people say it. So we're just going to release him too. So maybe they won't bitch about it as bad. But you released all of Hit Row. Like, I wanted to be positive when Hit Row came up, but I was very cautious about it because mm-hmm. I loved Hit Row, but Hit Row worked in NXT. I did not see Hit Row working on the main roster with what Vince likes and the way he does things. And as soon as they cut B-Fab, we saw that this was not going to be the Hit Row that we loved. And it wasn't even a week later, what, a week or two later? And now two the whole later, fu- yeah. everyone's gone. Like, they cut everyone. Well, they they try to make they try to make Top Dollar into the like the leader, or the mouthpiece of like of like Hit Row, and it just it wasn't working. Like I guess they didn't see Swerve as like the leader or the guy running things because that's why it worked. He was kind of like they were basically a a, a a rap group as wrestlers. That was their gimmick. That's at least the, the way I took at it, or like a record label. And like the main artist in this case was Swerve, and everybody else was like up and coming artists and, and people that he was trying to build up. And I love Top Dollar, but he's he's not the mouthpiece. He's not a, a focal point of a faction. Maybe yet he could be. I don't know, but we'll I'm never know now. now. We'll never yeah, know we, now. As much as they would try to make him the lead, like they fired him too. So like, yeah, just dumb, just fucking dumb, man. And all of Shotzi's tag team partners are fired. Like they got rid of Ember. Now they got rid of fucking Tegan. I am not a fan of this. I don't know why they hate me. They got rid of they they, they got rid of the tank too. I know you yeah, talked about no, this already. They on fired the, show. the fucking tank, the which tank is, is oh no, the tank is gone. Oh no, which is the one tag team partner I really needed them not to fire. That was my favorite. Like it went the tank, Ember Moon, Tegan Knox in that order, and they fired them all. Fucking mm. bullshit. Now you just uh, got Shotzi. Not Shotzi Blackheart, just Shotzi. They even fired yeah. her last name. Yeah, they fired her last name, too. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, it just, it kills me. You know, record profits, all this shit, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's a business. Uh, but if you're going to fight, like, why do it in waves? Why not just fire everyone and then be done with your firing? Why are we doing this? I mean, we fired, what, like 42 wrestlers? In the what's, last what, couple months. What sucks about this whole process is they are treating the releases of superstars as like us, how we clear our phones by deleting apps and pictures and clutter from our phone. But these are human be human beings that you're treating like they're disposable apps that you're just uninstalling. That's exactly how they're treating. Because this is what I do. Like after three months, I get bored of an app. I don't use this app anymore. I'm uninstalling it. And that's how they're treating these these people unfortunately it's gotten to the point because it's so consistent i'm a little numb to it i hate that i'm numb to it but it's like i saw the attached to it you don't get attached to the characters and what they're doing 
No, the only ones I'm attached to are people that I know they're not going to release anytime soon. And if they release them, I am I might have to tap out from wrestling because if Sasha so, Banks or Roman Reigns is no longer on my television screen and they get released. I'll be honest with you. Sasha Banks is probably more likely to go than Roman Reigns is. Well, well yeah. Well, yeah. No one's touching the tribal chief right now, but neither here nor there. It's good to take a break. It's what I'm doing right now. Just taking a break from WWE. I, I I looked at it this week because I was home. I looked at it. Right. And I still had questions about it, but it's good to take a break and look at other products and not compare, but just say, hmm, maybe this should, maybe this, you know, watching you get different thoughts in your head on how things should go. That's where I'm at. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's actually very helpful that the Bulls are actually good this time of the year, <laughs> and they're actually good for the first time since the Dark uh-huh. Rose years. So mm-hmm. that's where my energy has been going. It's watching my successful Chicago Bulls team. That's where I. That's where I'm at. And that's also why JJ is here because she hit me up and said, "Hey, I actually watched the wrestling this week. The wrestling. <laughs> can I come on?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, you can come on. We'd love to have you back. We had a blast ask. last time." I just said I'm coming on. I didn't ask. Well, oh. I, I took it as you asking because, I mean, I could have just said, yeah, okay, and then never sent you the link. So I, I took it as asking. Okay. Ooh, he implying some things, JJ. I'm just saying. Why he are you impl- trying to start stuff? Mm. Does he need to go on mute already? Mm. Unfortunately, no, we see, can't I'm mute I'm not going to mute either of you because I really enjoyed the interaction between the two of you last time, so I'm just going <laughs> to let this happen. No, I'm fun. good now. Look, I got coffee, so I'm good now. I'm not going to be grouchy. Um, <laughs> do you guys want to do the survivor teams first, or do you want to do that last? Well, why don't we explain to the listeners what we're actually doing? Cause we just said survivor series teams. Nobody knows. Well, I was going to explain it before we did it, but if you want to explain it now, Vince, it was your idea. Go ahead. Okay. You can do it now, but then do it last. You can explain it now, but just do it last. Exactly. Okay. And that's exactly where I was going with it, JJ. And that I was actually going to say, we tease everybody yeah, with the idea yeah. of what we're doing, have them stick around towards the end for the actual goods. It's what you do. I've been cock teased enough this week, but I guess I can do a little cock teasing. Okay. Okay. But this one's actually going to go somewhere. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So essentially with Survivor Series being this Sunday, we thought it'd be fun to kind of like make our own Survivor Series teams comprised of current and former wrestlers, either in WWE. We didn't specify outside of WWE or not. So uh, you said any wrestler and JJ asked me, so I just told her any wrestler. Yeah. So. So in my head, I limited it to WWE, but I'm like, I'm going to leave some wiggle room because if that's where they go, where their thought process, then we'll go with wrestlers outside of WWE. And that's totally fine. Cool. So we're going to do two teams, uh, a w- uh, women's uh, five team and the men's five team. And I didn't specify this, but we got to name one of the wrestlers as the team captains. And why would okay, they be easy. your team captain? Okay. Yeah, that's easy. So we got that to look forward to at the end of the show. All right. Uh, JJ, where do you want to start? Raw, NXT, SmackDown, Dynamite, or Rampage? Uh, NXT, because I, you know, when you mm. try, you know, when you try anal, you try it once, you don't like it, you give it time and you play around with it. You play, and, and I tried NXT 2.0 again and I just wasn't feeling it. So we just get that out the way. You're still not enjoying the anal from NXT 2.0, even after all my recaps, because I feel like my NXT recaps have been on point lately. It's yours. You you explain it fine, but watching it for me, watching it, I'm just like, why, what, how, where, why are they? Why is he do? Why is Johnny Gargano? So, no, we just okay. We we'll just talk about it. I will. I will. I will say this, Matt, that your the descriptions and recaps of NXT 2.0 are misleading. Because I went back and watched it, and it, it, well, I will say they do make the show more enjoyable, but it's for the wrong reasons. They're enjoyable. It's kind of like for, for the same reasons Dragon Ball Z or Bridge is enjoyable because they make fun of the shit they were not supposed to be making fun of. And are like, no, I well, feel like I am completely honest. And okay. as I say on Twitter, you can tell how much I enjoy NXT by how much I tweet yes. about NXT compared to everything else. True, it true, is true. still literally my favorite show. And we kicked it off with. One of my, or two of my favorite fucking wrestlers on NXT 2.0, the pride of Chicago, Tony D'Angelo, defeats Dexter Loomis in our opening match. 
Uh, Trick Mello jumps Dexter and smashes his meat beater in honor of No Nut November to make sure that Dexter can't jerk off. But thank God he's got Indy to take care of that. Uh, Johnny is as upset as I am and calls them out. But Pete Dunn comes out instead. Pete says Johnny can't jump in line for a title shot. Johnny calls Trick a bag handler and Dunn tells Mello that he isn't shit. Mello wants two bad bitches at the same damn time next week. And he's going to get them in Johnny Gargano and Pete Dunn in a tag team match. Trick Mello next week takes on Johnny and Pete Dunn. Interesting. Uh, we got Malcolm Bivens promo with dudes warming up in the locker room. Uh, Joe Wayne Gacy comes in and propositions diamond mind to join them. I guess uh, they kind of hand him a business card and say, get back at us later. Looks like uh, Joe Wayne Gacy is going from BDSM to gangbangs now. Like he, he had his thing with Harlan where he liked being choked and all that. Now he wants a group of guys all at once, you know, to each their own. We got an LA Knight vignette. Basically, he just said, fuck Grayson Waller. And I agree. Uh, Diamond Mine loses to Jacket Time and Odyssey Jones. GYV dedicated their title win to their Nana, or I'm sorry, dedicated the title win to their Nana on FaceTime, but had stolen Toxic Attraction's women's tag team titles that when they did it and lied to their Nana. And I don't know what the fuck is going on with GYV. Uh, MSK continue to search for the wonderful wizard of Oz. They take separate flights. So apparently neither of them join the mile high club. Unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, Chase loses to uh, Zion Quinn. Legato ends up jumping Zion Quinn. Then Alexa comes out and basically says, no one tells her no. And Electra Lopez, no means no. You need to learn that consent is important. Um, consent is key. Despite all of this, I bet Zion would still smash. So uh, that's where I'm at on that. Everyone's still trying to fuck. I don't care what happens. Uh, we got a Raquel interview. Says she misses her bout. And she really wants to hurt Dakota. Uh, we got the strip poker showdown where no one's stripped. Uh, Duke says he's going to make Grimes his bitch. They play hold him. Grimes bluffs to a win. Then Duke gets really, really mad before the second round. And destroys Grimes and then trims his face pubes and his hair. So mm. that was the thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's trying to get a manscaped uh, sponsorship. That's what we're going for here. Yes. Yes. Uh, we got Jurassic Jim and Kyle O'Reilly defeating Brooks and Dunn. Uh, what? Nothing. Jurassic okay, Jim good. just made me chuckle. <laughs> Jurassic Jim, prehistoric Pete, whatever you want to call Von, Von Wagner. Um, Indy bails on Persia because she needs to go check on Dexter uh, and his busted salami stroker. And Persia kind of seems annoyed, but she's like, fuck it. I'll go out there and I'll handle the handicap match on my own. Mm -hmm. And then crushes two enhancement talents. Uh, Robert Stone, who also had all of his uh, talent and friends fired, is now looking for someone new. So he's hanging out, scouting her in the crowd. Uh, we got lashing out. Grayson Waller walks in, says he's got the tea on night. Looks like he's done being nice. I wasn't feeling the segment, really. Um, we got Crazy Kai interview. She tells Toxic Attraction that they owe her twice now. GYV gives Toxic Attraction their belts back, and then they tell him that he's, they're pathetic, and I completely agree. Like, you had to steal belts and lie to your grandma. Mm -hmm. Um Team Ninja is apparently getting a rave makeover, so they're going to come out doing Molly every week and swinging glow sticks, so that should be fun. Uh, we got a Chapa promo. He's bothered by Mello saying that he's the A-champ and just doesn't like Grayson Waller in general. Again, don't blame him. Uh, the Big Bad Booty Breaker comes out, says he doesn't give a shit what bothers Grandpa Champa. Uh, Champa says he's already spanked him. He needs to move on. Breaker says he's going to win or die trying. We got a Steiner math reference, which was fucking awesome. Probably the mm -hmm. highlight of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so apparently Ciampa and the big, big Bad Booty Breaker are not done. And then in our main events, Dakota Kai and Giant Gonzalez ends in a DQ after Toxic Attraction comes down and jumps Raquel. Uh, Cora Jade comes down to try and make the save, but gets beaten down. And then Zoe Stark shows up, gives EO her crutch. EO comes in and cleans house with the crutch. And then uh, unfortunately... Apparently, Mr. Regal has been relieved of his war game duties because it was EO who yelled war games, not William Regal coming out and declaring war games. It's not really war games if it's not Regal. It's not. What are we swallowing from NXT? Well, I, 
can I go first just because I only really have two things I'm swallowing from NXT and I, it'll be quick. Okay. Uh, it'll You're be. <laughs> don't put that mess. Don't put that. Don't put that out there. Don't put that out there. Don't put false information out there, Matt. It's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, the Champa promo with uh Ron Breaker was funny, especially the Steiner math reference. Pop for that, and the the main event. I, I I from what we got to see from Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, it was a solid match up until like the the back old the shenanigans, the clusterfuck, whatever you want to call it. And even though it's not the same. If anyone's going to call a war games, might as well be one of my favorite wrestlers on NXT, Io Shirai. So other than that, everything else is... Oh, and the Cameron Grimes uh, uh, porker like thingy. Okay. Yeah. The, the the whole... I think that was the most entertaining, entertaining segment of NXT was the poker-like match between uh, Duke Hudson. I, I draw a blank on his name. Uh, I don't he's blame so you. He's not interesting. He's a generic wrestler. He's like a yeah. generic wrestler you'd create in 2K. But Duke cuts in and Cameron Grimes. And it was mostly Cameron Grimes just like being hilarious. And then the commentators like talking very so slightly like actual like poker like commentators like hilarious. Hilarious. What about you, JJ? The poker thing. That was the only thing that made sense to me. Okay. JJ and I are on the same page tonight. Uh I am going to swallow Tony D'Angelo versus Dexter Loomis in our opening match. I love both guys. Tony's on a roll right now. He needs to win. Dexter isn't really a guy that I see them putting any titles on or anything. So just having him do his thing is good enough for me. I don't need to see him racking up a shit ton of wins all of the time. You just need to see him do his thing. Yeah, I just need to see him do his thing. Uh, Unfortunately, they broke that thing or they broke the thing he does it with. So uh, hopefully he's okay. But also... Johnny and Pete Dunn as a tag team taking on Trick Mello. That whole setup was fantastic for me, and I'm excited as fuck for that match. That should be fun as shit. Um, I'm also going to swallow. I, I mean, I'm down for more Champa versus Big Bad Booty Breaker. Like, I, I really liked what we saw the first time. I mm-hmm. really enjoy uh, Baby Steiner. I want to see more of him. I don't think there's anyone right now positioned outside of maybe a Pete Dunn that could really mm-hmm. challenge champ. And obviously Pete Dunn is focusing on the North American title, which right. they are saying is the a title. So like, I, I, it's not like we see this match every week. So I'm down for a rematch, um, especially if he earns it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree with you on Dakota Kai, giant Gonzalez. However, because it's set up for war games, the cluster fuck didn't bother me at all. Um, right. I was fine with it. Um, and then the uh, the stuff with Zion Quinn and Legato, that story has me intrigued. For uh, all so, the different reasons. No. Uh, honestly, the idea that Electra wants Zion Quinn to be in the group and he's resisting and they're attacking him now, like that whole relationship and everything that's going on there, I'm interested in that story. I enjoy the progression every week. So You're interested in the fact that they aren't taking consent into consideration here. I, I'm interested to see how the lack of consent plays out. Okay. And if he's still willing to smash. Okay. I like the rephrasing you did there. <laughs> um, what are you guys spitting? GYV shit. Did we just say that at the same time? Jacket time. Is oh, jack- jacket yes. time. Yeah. Jacket time. Spitting I don't that. Understand. Why is uh, Kushida in a tag team? That's because I haven't watched it, what, two months. Why is Kushida in a tag team? That's what made me mad. So uh, Kushida was having issues with Roderick Strong and Diamond Mind. And Ike Jiro was also having issues with Diamond Mind and Roderick Strong. So those two decided to team up because essentially by themselves, it's one on four, one on five. If you count Ivy Nile. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, unfortunately, I hate to go there, but. If no one's going to say it, I'm going to say it. I just feel like they only paired them up because they're the two Asians in NXT. Well, they're not the two Asians in NXT. You got Boa. You've got uh, you, formerly well, Mei the Ying, two who jet- is apparently getting remade over. You okay, let me, re- let me rephrase that. They're the two Japanese male wrestlers on NXT that they compared together. That is correct. The yeah. one wearing the jacket reminds me of Michael Nakazawa. <laughs> I can Jiro. Yeah, no. He's definitely a comedy act. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. 
uh what about you matt what you spitting i'm spitting the poker segment i you guys enjoyed it which is cool I, that was the low point for me was like <laughs> i don't know when, i just so matt spits fun jj matt spits yeah, matt, fun matt spits fun I, that's fair no i just i'm watching it i didn't like i'm enjoying my wrestling i'm enjoying what i'm getting and then we we stop the wrestling to play poker and like they play a full hand of poker Duke Hudson is a fucking charisma vacuum for me. Like the guy does nothing for me. Cameron Grimes. This was not my favorite Cameron Grimes segment. This did not really work for me as far as Cameron Grimes being Cameron Grimes during the actual poker part right. where he's obviously bluffing. And like, I don't know. I just, I wasn't feeling the poker segment Okay, nobody, and nobody stripped. And what's the point of playing poker if no one's getting naked? Well, Cameron Grimes is already halfway there. Um, don't be mad at me. Don't be mad. I'm spitting uh, Tony D'Angelo and Dexter Loomis solely because Dexter Loomis lost. Okay, I'll do that. And, and because um, the, the the portrait was destroyed, too. Yeah. I like the portrait. That, that, I, that's it. I'm not going to get mad at you for spitting a Dexter Loomis loss. I, I understand it. Uh, I'm also spitting EO yelling war games because that's not what I want. Okay. I need William Regal. Nobody... Nobody, I don't care if it was fucking Shotzi Blackheart. And I would, as I said in the group chat earlier, I would crawl naked across broken glass for Shotzi Blackheart. I don't care if it's her. Nobody should be saying war games, but William no Regal. One. And if you're not going to have William Regal do it, then you don't do war games. Plain and simple. That's where Facts. I stand. Facts. Would it uh, been like a banner? Would it been like the marquee saying war games flashing or something? No. Would that be, no. What if it was a recording? That? I was gonna say if they do that, they need a recording of William Regal saying it. Like after he dies, it, that still needs to be a thing. His voice saying it on a recording. <laughs> War I'm not games. Mad at it. Yes. I'm not mad at it. That makes okay. sense. Okay. Okay. I'm with that. I'm done with that. Um, we spit anything else? Nope. Yeah, I'm with you on uh GYV too, because that was fucking trash. And everything Grayson Waller. Because I yeah, I don't know why. I just can't stand the guy. I don't like him. He 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 his something about his face. Something about his face. I just don't like it. something about his face. Uh, overall, for you guys, NXT spitter swallow. I'm swallowing. Gargo. Uh, Gargo, undecidedly. I don't know how I, I feel about spit. NXT anymore. I can't spit because I haven't watched in a while, so I'm just going to gargle. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, where are we going next? Raw, SmackDown, Dynamite, or Rampage? Raw. Raw? Since you're just right. waiting on me, Raw. <laughs> well yeah because you're the guest so you guide us through you make all the choices I'm already on here i'm not a guest you are still a guest katie's still technically a guest and guides us through and she's been on here more than vince has i resent that statement <laughs> regardless yeah, of how true it may be and yeah it, it, she, her pop yeah her her streaming she got you too mm. he mentioned you in her streaming indirectly hmm it's okay. It's okay. I, I take it in stride. Take it in stride. I've got to pit them against each other because then I get the best out of both of them. So that it's a plan. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> kick it off with a big E promo. He addresses whooping Roman's ass, calls out Kevin Owens. KO says he snapped because someone said he did something and everyone believed it. Uh, he's going to be the bad guy because everyone wants him to be the bad guy. And he says it's all Big E's fault. Uh, e wants to fight, but Kevin Owens leaves. Then the Usos attack Big E on the stage as Big E's going after KO. For whatever fucking reason, Matt Riddle sticks his white privilege ass nose where it doesn't belong, gets involved in some shit that has nothing to do with him because he needs to be in the fucking spotlight. Uh, and Randy points all this out later, so shout out to Randy. Uh, Randy is the, then, the voice of Ritter. Then Jay... Uso decides to say it, it doesn't matter anymore, which is apparently is the truth about the brand split because they sanction a fucking match with two SmackDown superstars. And again, Trash. I don't care during Survivor Series if we get what we got tonight with Big E where they attack and they show up. I don't want to see fucking wrestling match. off your show. And that's what we got. RK bro, because Randy decided to come out and join Riddle and Big E losing to the Usos and Seth Rollins because Seth showed up for some reason. Uh, I, I, I guess he's in the thing with Big E. He, yeah, he's in the thing with Big E. But the fuck does he care about the Usos for? Like, they were in Indianapolis. <laughs> they had to give them that that shield esque thing. Something. Ah, uh, so 
Yeah. Are you are you gonna swallow raw because it was from your your home state? No, that's the only reason why I watched raw because it was here. Okay. I actually thought it was this coming Monday instead of last. Well, this this past Monday, I thought it was next. Gotcha. But uh, RK Bro and Biggie lose to the Usos and Rollins, and then after the match, Biggie attacks the Usos, gives Jay a big ending, and says, "I received the message. Here's one to give back to Roman." Hits him with the big ending. No, no, um, no. He didn't say Roman. He said, yo, daddy. Yeah, your daddy. Said, <laughs> you tell your daddy. Hilarious. Um, we got a KO interview about snapping last week. Finn lets KO know that he doesn't trust him. And basically, he had a match tonight, but now it's going to be with KO. Um, I actually didn't write down who won that match, weirdly enough. Um, unless I wrote down lower. One of the things oh, I yeah, I did. Say- Finn loses to KO. So I, I wrote KO v Finn up here and then lower where they actually had the match. I wrote it. So yeah, Finn lost to KO. Um, Bianca defeats Tamina in a random appearance of Tamina out of fucking nowhere, like an RKO. Um, we got a Bianca interview. She talks about Dewdrop. Tamina interrupts, makes a challenge. Dewdrop tells Bianca she'll be looking for a Survivor Series after the match, like comes out on the rampway. She's like, I'll be looking for you at Survivor Series. And it's like, I don't know why. Just wait till fucking raw. Like, this isn't about you. Right. Uh, we got a Becky promo. Becky reminds us of who she is because Ric Flair and Charlotte Flair keep saying no one knows who Becky is anymore. Uh, Liv interrupts, praises Becky a little bit. Becky apologizes for getting Liv's hopes up by telling her that when she returns, Liv will be champion because Liv had that opportunity and failed. And now that Becky's back, Liv doesn't have a chance of being champion ever again or anymore. Um, Liv does the obligatory calling the woman she's feuding with a bitch thing that we do in WWE, which, by the way, I love the fact that Shotzi is making fun of that constantly. Shout out to Shotzi for being amazing. Um, Becky goes for the manhandle slam. Liv counters, and then Becky runs out of the ring. Liv picks up her belt, and Becky is not happy that Liv is touching her belt, but that's what you get when you leave your shit behind. People touch it. Uh, as I said, Randy dishes out some truth bombs to riddle about him being fucking nosy and not minding his own business and not staying in his own fucking lane. And riddle still doesn't fucking understand. He just doesn't fucking get it. He got sold it like a child. Cause he is a child. He is a grown (laughs) fucking child. Uh, three profits defeat alpha Academy. Ray is really, really pissed that his nepotism failed confronts Adam Pierce about it, and then ends in a match with him and Bobby Lashley. Uh, Nikki loses to Zelina, and then Rhea defeats Carmella. Um, Adam threatens Big E with Brock if he interferes in the KO versus Finn match. And now people were thinking this was Adam like threatening Brock to come back, and it's like, how does that make sense? I'm pretty sure it was him saying, listen, I suspended Brock Lesnar. If I can suspend Brock Lesnar, I can suspend you. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what he meant. Where he was going. Uh, like I said, Finn loses KO. We got a Seth interview. He's going to lead Team Raw to victory. He's going to beat Big E and take Raw to the mountaintop and then yells at some dude to not wake his baby. Uh, apparently, the guy did end up waking the baby, but I think it was Seth yelling, don't wake the baby, that woke the fucking baby. Uh, counterproductive AJ, Seth. Yeah, counterproductive Seth. Uh, AJ and almost do an interview. Basically, they run down the tag division. He uh, AJ compares himself to Iron Man and almost to the Hulk with a little Marvel reference there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rudolph compared them to uh, the movie Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito, uh, with AJ being Danny DeVito. And then AJ and almost defeat Rudolph in a tag team match. And I don't know why this is happening and is a thing, but WWE just doesn't give a fuck about tag teams. Um, Lashley defeats Rey Mysterio because. Lashley's thing is beating up kids and their fathers. That's what he does. Beat up yes. Goldberg, beat up Goldberg's kid. Yes. Beat up Ray's kid, beat up Ray. We have some other kids who need to get their ass beat uh, that we can send Bobby after, like over on AEW with that fucking kid hook that everyone loves. Go whoop his ass and then whoop Taz's ass too. I'm down for it. Um, Adam Pierce announces that Ray is out of Survivor Series after the match and his replacement is to be determined. And then out comes Austin Theory. He drops Dominic, and then Adam Pierce is like, you know what? I know I said I wanted Team Raw to win and that everyone should be champions, but ah, fuck that. Austin Theory, you get the spot. So we've replaced Rey Mysterio 
with fucking Austin Theory. They basically Jesus. F they F them kids. Yeah. Uh, what are we swallowing for Monday Night Raw? You can go, JJ. Finn Balor. Yeah, okay. I'll swallow that. That was a damn good match. Yeah, uh, really good match. Who else? The whole segment with Bianca and uh, Dewdrop. I like that. Okay. The the scolding Randy Orton gave Surfer Bro. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? And I'm I seen what Raw put what Hulu put out, so a lot of things I didn't see. So. Okay, uh, I'm also. Cool. I'm gonna swallow the Becky promo with Liv. I'm enjoying this feud. Yeah. Uh, and they're making Liv look like a million bucks. Hopefully, Liv comes out of this with a little something, and it's not just another loss. And then she's back down in obscurity. So, mm-hmm. what about you? Uh, I'm with you on the Liv Morgan Becky Lynch stuff. I thought it was really good. Uh, to this day, I keep saying that Liv should have won Money in the Bank instead of Nikki uh, Nikki Cross, but neither here nor there. I'm really high on Liv Morgan. I think she should be higher up in the totem pole. She has been working and busting her ass off. So I'm happy to see that uh, Biggie whooping Uso ass and then tell him to go tell your daddy, aka Roman Reigns. Hilarious. Made me chuckle. And uh, what else? Uh, that's about all I'm swallowing. Oh, I should have done it. The the thing where here, let me redo that. So we got a big E promo. He addresses whooping Roman's ass. He calls out KO. KO says he snapped because someone says he did some stuff that he didn't do, and everyone believed it. Says he's gonna be the bad guy, blames Big E. Big E wants to fight KO. KO leaves, and then we get a random handicap match. It is Big E and RK Bro versus Seth Rollins, and somehow Seth Rollins wins. And then after the match, Uso show up out of nowhere and attack Big E because we would never allow them to be in a sanctioned match uh, on Monday uh, Night Raw. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Matt. Matt, you, you you recapped the match. You talked about the match. You sold it. You, you can't go back and just pretend. You can't go back and do it, man. I'm All right. Sorry. Well, then I'm spitting that because fuck the Usos being in a match on Raw. There you go. There you go. Um, what am I spitting? I'm spitting them taking out Rey Mysterio out of the Survivor Series team like, and replacing him with Austin Theory. I mean, yep. it's one thing to take off Rey Mysterio. That's fine if you don't think he's the right answer there, but then again, you have Jeff Hardy on the other side, so again, you know, uh, I don't know, replacing him with Austin Theory, again, just, I feel like I'm, I, like I'm reiterating the same points that you guys were making last week, but what was the goddamn point of announcing all of these participants just to reshuffle the deck days before Survivor Series? It makes no sense. Just have qualified matches. Um, what else am I spitting? I'm going to spit actually that whole opening segment uh, after everything that happened with KO because Riddle came out and I didn't need to see that. And then the Uso shit happened. So at that whole match, everything before that match. So as soon as KO left, mm-hmm. spitting everything after that. Uh, okay. Oh, spitting uh, for whatever reason, AJ and almost in the program with Rudolph. Like what? Why? The yeah. fuck is that for? Two and heel the twins reference. That, it was dumb. Dumb. I'm spitting uh, Bobby Lashley and, and Ray Mysterio because that shouldn't have been the main event. Mm. I didn't Fair. like it. Should have been Kevin Owens Finn. Yeah, that's what I said. It should have been them. Um, we spit anything else? Nah, man. No. Um, what is what? his? What's his name? Uh, Pierce. Adam Pierce. Adam Pierce. Yeah, him and his so-called authority telling. Having, I guess he thought he had control over when first I didn't like when Ray Mysterio was like, We had this verbal agreement that my son was going to be in the Survivor Series. Wait a minute, who? Why do you think you got that privilege? <laughs> I was, it, that took me a bad, it took me back. I was like, Wait, really? And then he and then Adam Pierce, he was him and I don't, is he the G, which one is he the general manager of Raw or SmackDown? Neither. That's the thing. So both him yeah. and Sonya are simultaneously the authority figures of Raw and SmackDown, but neither oh. one yeah. uh, is one or the other. And that's part of the fucking issue that doesn't but make any sense. Decisions. They're not making, the, they're making their own separate Question. decisions and it isn't making sense to me. Question. I feel like I noticed that this week, unless I missed some shit. I feel like I haven't seen Sonya on Raw in a minute, and I haven't seen Adam Pierce on SmackDown in a minute. 
No, so Adam Pierce was on SmackDown tonight, and Sonya was on Raw. So Sonya mostly deals with the women's division, and Adam Pierce kind of deals with the men's division. But Sonya also dips her toe in the men's division as well, whereas Adam does nothing with the women's division. Uh, all I can say is, as far as authority goes, white privilege is running wild on uh, Raw and SmackDown right now with mm-hmm. these two. They're mm-hmm. just screwing over all the blacks and Mexicans, and it's really fucking rude. And I'm not a fan of it because it's making me feel some type of way about myself when I watch this. I don't like it. Again, not my kind of white people. Yeah. Yeah, not my kind of white people is the exact statement. Uh, overall, Ross, bitter swallow. It. I'll swallow it. It was okay. Swallow you just say it? that because it's in Indiana. Yep. No, it was actually okay. I don't I didn't have more questions about it than I did watching NXT. It was okay. okay. It wasn't it, it 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 entertained me enough to actually sit and watch it instead of skipping and trying to fast forward through it. So it I'll swallow. JJ is a very, very uh what's the word I'm looking for? Generous reviewer. Yes. Uh I'm spitting because the Usos had a match on Raw and that's some fucking bullshit. And I refuse bullshit. to accept this bloodline can do whatever they want uh nonsense so because someone tried to give me that on twitter and i'm like no not doing it trash no uh wait wait wait. before you before you finish i gotta go back to nxt i did not watch nxt when i tweeted out i was gonna write the steiner map promo on my board when i get back to work i did not watch nxt that night and that tweeted said i was going to write the steiner map promo because i was just thinking and it just came to my head and then you tweeted about it. I was like, oh, okay. So that was just a happy coincidence. Look at you. Yeah, it really was. Very nice. It really was. Uh, noise, you want to s- stick with WWE and finish off SmackDown, or you want to jump into AEW? Let's, have, let's do Dynamite. We'll do Dynamite. All right. So Dynamite kicked off uh, with a Kenny promo with the Bucks and Adam Cole. Basically, Kenny's taking some time off. He's got some injuries stuff he wants to rehab and then he's like hey i need you got i need you to hold down the fort while i'm gone adam cole's like dude i got this don't worry and kenny's like actually i was talking to the cucks not you uh and adam cole's like oh no 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 i get it I, yeah no, my mistake uh so a little shade thrown from kenny to the new leader of the elite adam cole Dance. um Dance. we got a celebration for hangman adam page uh brian danielson Comes out acting faker than an impossible whopper. Says that all Page does is talk. Then when gets challenged to a fight. Uh, so he turns it down. So Hangman doesn't have any excuses about not being ready because he's always ready to wrestle. He showed up to wrestle. Hangman's out here in jeans and boots. Uh, they brawl. The Dark Order breaks it up. We end up getting Tree Seaman defeating Evil Uno in a match. And then after the match, he says, He's going to kick all of the Dark Order's heads in until he gets to Adam Page and challenges Colt Cabana to a match next week in Chicago in his hometown so he can kick Colt's head in in Chicago. His head in like Katie wants Zaya to kick hers. Don't you know that theme slaps too? That theme slaps. Which theme? Brian Danielson's new theme. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Um, It's we got a weird Eddie Kingston promo that's interrupted by 2.0. Fucking forgot they were a thing. Uh, they taunt Eddie Kingston about how he cries all the time. Uh, Kingston says he wants to fight Garcia. Uh, then after everything's said and done, he's like, just one time, one time, I want to do an interview with no interruptions. He, I'm going to catering, and he bails. Uh, OC and uh, Tommy Hero Itchy versus Botcher and the Bland. Uh, I believe Orange Cassidy and Itchy got the win. Yeah, Tommy Hero Ishi. Yeah, yeah, Tommy Hero Ishi. That's what I said. Tama, or as they say, so there was a whole discussion on Shili about whether it's Ishi or Ishii. Savannah says it's Ishi. They kept saying Ishii, and Savannah watches a lot of New Japan, so apparently in Japan they say Ishi. But for some reason, Tama Hero Ishi. So that's so I used to watch him in New Japan, uh, and it, it would they would always be pronounced Tama Hero Ishi. But every time he wrestles in the States, it's Tomohiro Ishii, which weird thro- throws me off. I don't know. Yeah. It's a weird thing. I guess it's it's kind of kind of like when like my name is Vicente, but like someone else says it Vincent or Vincente. It like completely off. 
So either way, like that is Justin. one but just like yeah. Jocelyn, but I get Joycelyn. Joyce, who the fuck says Joycelyn? Joyce, Joycelyn, because wow. of yeah. I can see Jocelyn, which is also weird, but like I could see that like reading your name, I could see somebody reading your name and saying it that way, kind of like AA Ron or like you know that whole shit. Like, like I could see that, but I don't. I don't get Joycelyn. Um. Anyway, Itchy is one big naked mole rat. Uh. I enjoy him. That was a fun little thing. Um, he is. He kind of looks like that naked mole rat from fucking uh, Impossible. 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 But if he was on roids, like Rufus, Rufus? yeah, Rufus, Rufus yeah, on roids, looked... Rufus on roids. Yeah. Uh, we got Andrade and FTR interview. Uh, they're going to do an eight man tag in Chicago with Alistair Black. FTR says they're going to waive their fee because this is personal. And then Tully tells Arn. If he wants to get busy, he's got one more in him. I don't think he does, but okay. Uh, Britt and friends do an interview. They're tired of the spotlight, or Britt's tired of the spotlight, so she's going to put it on Jamie. Says that Thunder Rosa is a stepping stone for Jamie Hayter to the TBS title, um, Mm -hmm. or the host title, depending on how you look at it. Uh, Nyla defeats Sheeta. Um, Sheeta runs some hard wood across Vicky's backside in the best Eddie Guerrero tribute I have seen all week. Um... Yeah, I said it. Uh, Deep takes out Sheeta's knee during the match, which ends up leading to Nyla getting the win. And now Nyla has as many wins in AEW as Sheeta. Um, we got a uh, Malachi Black vignette. Malachi basically says he's going to face fuck Cody and his friends until they all can't breathe. Uh, that's what I heard. So I'm all for Malachi Black face fucking Cody and his friends. Okay. Choke, Everybody has choke. it. Choke, choke out QT Marshall so I don't have to see him anymore. Uh, speaking of face fucking, we got an MJF promo. Uh, he deserves to be the next champ because nobody's on his level. Then come out comes CM Punk. MJF introduces himself to CM Punk. CM Punk just kind of smirks at him, doesn't shake his hand, walks away. Really, really just disrespects the shit out of MJF, which I'm all about. Mm-hmm. Um, but now I have blue balls because I was super excited about a CM Punk MJF promo battle. And that was the first time I was cock teased this week and didn't get what the fuck I wanted. Uh, we got a Darby interview says MJF didn't break him. He wants the biggest and the baddest. And apparently that's Mr. Ass. Uh, so Billy shows up and says, Hey, that's me. And we're going to have a match on rampage. And Darby's like, yeah, okay, I guess whatever. I'll fight you. Uh, we got a super clip promo. They're not happy about how they lost. Did and you then just Cole, say super click. That's what I say every week. Yeah. <laughs> Why did I miss that? <laughs> uh, Cole it's so and Fish, subtle. So subtle, DJ. That's gotta, why. Just, just got to slide it in there and see if they notice. Um, <laughs> Cole and Fish challenged Jurassic Express again for a match on Rampage. Uh, we got Leo Rush and Dante Martin defeating the acclaimed. Then Team Taz comes out, explains that, listen, last week was just business. Leo Rush is a businessman. He should understand this. And then they continue to try and recruit Martin by using the success of powerhouse Hobbs since he joined team Taz as an example of why Dante Martin should join team Taz. And I am trying to figure out what fucking success powerhouse Hobbs has had since joining team Taz that would make anyone think, Hey, that's a team I want to be a part of. He, uh, he couldn't even succeed in putting CM Punk through a table properly. Like, no, he, has, he hasn't succeeded in much. Didn't I want wonder to sh- did they forget he has a brother that's that uh, injury. Just, he has a brother well, that's a tag team. Hopefully that is an interesting story when his brother is cleared and comes back uh, between Leo Rush and his brother and where his alliance lies. So we'll see how that plays out. Yeah. Um. Christian and Jurassic Express accept the challenge. And then in our main event uh, that a lot of people didn't watch because of all of the issues between these people, allegations against Jay Lethal and, you know, Sammy Guevara oh, making the lot, making, making, you know, the, the thing he said about Sasha, uh, Sammy that's won. What I forgot to watch. Okay. Yeah. So no, uh, I, I purposely took like, off for uh, dynamite after that. Yeah. Dynamite so. ended after Christian and Jurassic Express accepted the challenge. That's when Dyn- that was the main event of Dynamite. That was your main event? 
right. that was my main event. Uh, Luchasaurus we... Christian, that's my main event. <laughs> you can't blame me. I, I I love uh I love me some Luchasaurus, even though our last co-hosts were not a big fan of Luchasaurus. Uh, Daryl was talking about how he didn't like the Luchador dinosaur and. Remember the whole Barney slapping kids thing? Like it was. A oh thing. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I thought you, you were referencing Travis. I'm like, are you being no. sarcastic? Because Travis no, loves what... Luchasaurus. Yeah, no, Travis loves Luchasaurus. Uh, I thought you meant like. One? No. Uh, JJ. Um, uh, the Hangman celebration. Yes. Brian yep. Danielson coming out. Yes. Him and Hangman having their bout. Brian Danielson versus Evil Uno. I like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I actually fell asleep. Now that I thought about it, I went to sleep after the first hour of Dynamite. I, I tried. I'm doing better. I'm getting better. At least I watched. I mean, movies. you did come on here and tell us that you really, really enjoyed Dynamite. So you really enjoyed the first hour of Dynamite before you fell asleep. And I'm wondering at which point you fell asleep because I'm assuming you saw Tommy Hero Itchy and Orange Cassidy. I love that. I didn't. Love that. I seen Nyla. I think after Nyla and Sheeta. I think after that, I turned it off. Okay. Okay. So you fell asleep for promo, interview, promo, Russian Martin, and then Jurassic Express and Christian's main event. See, if Dynamite wasn't anything with Dante Martin, I'm going to swallow. It doesn't matter. You know, if Dynamite ended after the first hour or after the Sheeta Nyla match, perfect one hour show. Perfect one hour show. Fair enough. Um, Um, Go ahead, Vince. I'm like gonna reiterate what JJ said. Uh, I I'm swallowing the whole Hangman segment. Brian Danielson right now the best, the top heel in all of AEW. He's already surpassed everyone. Just him turning heel like that, heel da- Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson, whichever one you want. Tree Tree they, don't, they don't fuck it up. Uh, <laughs> which either version you want to call him, uh, he is he is fucking fantastic as a heel. I love this, and I like. I'm also selling the fact that he finished them off uh, with the Hell's Gate submission. So to be clear, you are swallowing evil tree semen. Yes. Okay. Always, every day, and twice on Sundays. I feel I'm like that's something from Dragon Ball Z. I will <laughs> swallow any time uh, M M Douche F gets gets roasted. Anytime. Yeah. Um, that too, CM Punk, MJF. Uh, I'm stalling for the f- simple fact that this actually looks like a interesting and engaging feud that CM Punk's actually going to go into. It looks like the first real feud and program he's going to go into. And it's interesting because you can make a case for him losing the feud, but also make a case for him winning. I really don't know which way it's going to go. It's a fucking toss-up, and I'm genuinely intrigued. This is the first time I actually care about anything that MJF has, has done since the whole like breakup of like him and Jericho. Okay, okay. Uh, Just because I tune him out. Just I tune him out. I'm not going to jump the gun on this feud because I felt like Eddie Kingston was going to be or is the first feud that CM Punk really got. No, I never felt like I was like quick. Like I, I, I like Eddie Kingston or whatever, but this, this had no legs to go past like a CM Punk win. Like unless Kingston won the match, which he wasn't going to. I didn't really see this feud going any further. CM Punk is just slutting his way all the way through AEW. Um, Leave him. Are you are you, are you slut shaming, sir? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm stating a fact. Okay. Because okay. it sounded like he was shaming. I, I didn't say shame on him for slutting his way through AEW. I said he's slutting his way through AEW. Like we 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 know it. You don't need to reiterate it. We know what he's um, doing. Let him live his best life. I'm gonna swallow Kenny Omega not being on my TV for in the next couple months because I yes. think we needed that. So I'm all for that. I'm going to swallow Adam Cole taking over the elite uh, all for uh, full on super clit and bringing in after Kenny Omega left Bobby fish and kind of starting to reform the undisputed era over a rally contract yeah. about to expire soon. Bring them uh, over. I will swallow evil tree semen as well. And everything hangman page, not the evil Uno match because evil Uno does nothing for me. Um, <laughs> The tag team match, uh, Chaos versus Botcher and Bland. Yes. Uh, Nyla versus Sheeta as well. Mm-hmm. Everything Malachi Black, swallowing that, uh, his promo. Yeah. Um, and then Russian Martin at defeating the Acclaim because fuck Max Caster and uh, his tag team partner. Don't hate me. I know JJ loves Max Caster, so. Don't, don't, 
Don't I hate me. I didn't say I love him. He's funny. His his lines are funny. Don't him don't hate. Wrestler, he I question his wrestling, but him doing the lines yeah. when he comes out is funny. I must stop you real quick, Vince. If you're about to say something about Malachi Black, let's just move on. No, 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 no. So don't hate me. Don't judge. But the acclaim are kind of warming up on me. I'm kind of okay. warming up to the acclaim. Oh, okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> like, it's so bad. It's good. No, it's not. It's so bad. It's good. Like, I listened to the lines that he was spinning. Like, you know what? That's kind of creative. You've you been know? doing That's... coke with Tony Khan? No. Because I'm pretty sure no, that's the only reason the acclaimed are getting TV time. Good. You cannot say that line. His girlfriend, when they were here, when he was coming out, he told Jungle Boy, your girlfriend hang out with seven dudes. You can't say that wasn't fun. You can't. No, you cannot. That was a good line. If it wasn't the Dark Order, it would be. But, I mean, I'm not sure the Dark Order know what to do with their penises. Like, I, I'm, I'm not very sure that they know how those things function so especially tiny hands like i i he definitely doesn't know what sex is or i guarantee the majority of the dark order of virgins i'm just saying oh my um God. what are we spitting from dynamite main event that didn't main take place main event uh, that nobody watched main event nobody watched uh team test every time i see team test just spit that Yep. Team Taz is out the door. Um, I'm also going to spit uh, the Eddie Kingston 2.0 shit because, like, why? Again, I dubbed this night of the shitty tag teams or night of the garbage tag teams because you had Botcher and Bland. You had 2.0. Like, you had uh, the Acclaimed, which apparently I'm the only one that thinks they're a trash tag team, but, you know, neither here nor there. Um, I just... You, I give WWE shit for not using tag teams, but then AEW uses all the tag teams I don't give a fuck about. So, <laughs> damn it if you do, damn it if you don't, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> JJ, you spitting anything from Dynamite? I just said MJF. Yeah. Just MJF. MJF. Yeah. Um, overall, Dynamite spit or swallow? Swallow. Swallow. Yep. I'll swallow. Uh, SmackDown or Rampage? SmackDown. SmackDown. Uh, we kick it off the same way we kick off every SmackDown with the Bloodline. Uh, they talk shit about Big E and Randy and his sidekick and how uh, the Usos are out there talking shit about Big E and Randy and Randy's sidekick and what happened on Monday. Uh, Paul and Roman come out. Paul struggles through an orgasm to put Roman over. For this crowning ceremony and then roman cuts him off and says hey uh whose idea was this this is stupid do you think i give a shit about any of this <laughs> and everyone's pointing fingers um because roman doesn't give a fuck about a crown or anything else xavier woods comes out and school schools roman on what it is to be a king and says it's not about the crown or the cape or the scepter it's about how you treat people um and then roman's like oh okay so you don't give a shit about any of this stuff jay disrespect all of his kingly uh, items so like they go through all of his cosplay shit they break the scepter they step on the cape they smash the throne and then as it's about to be the crown he's like are you sure you don't care you really don't care woods runs down to save the crown gets jumped held and has to watch as roman stomps the crown in front of him this man worked his entire Bad, life to be king of the ring and they just took all of that away from him and beat him down. Uh, but Xavier Woods is not defeated. He said he will be back at the end of the night to face Roman one-on-one -on -one the way he asked Roman to meet him without, uh, what did he call him? The wet bandits, uh, Jay and Jimmy. <laughs> the wet bandits. I didn't even catch that. Yeah. Uh, we had a fatal four-way match. Uh, Sheamus versus Sor Sorrow versus gender versus Ricochet. Um, because apparently Sheamus gave more of a shit about getting on the Survivor Series team than he did tag teaming with his uh, new stand partner, Ridge Holland, who stole Vince's gimmick. Uh, Ridge does come out and helps Sheamus get the win, and Sheamus gets the last spot on the Survivor Series team for Team SmackDown. You look like you want to say something, Vince. No. Nope. You okay? No. No. Okay. No, 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 no. no mask either. So no longer mask Sheamus. Uh, 
We got a Jeff Hardy interview where he's interrupted by Corbin, and this is something no one gives a fuck about, but uh, Jeff beat Madcap Moss because they made that match. Uh, we got Aaliyah and Naomi losing to Shayna and Natalia in a tag team match because Ref Aja had a quicker count than Vince and Bet, which we talked about earlier. Carry on with your recaps. <laughs> Literally, as you said, don't put that out there. I almost said it was almost as fast as Aja's count, but I was like, I'll just wait till SmackDown. Um, so something's going on with Sonya and Aja and screwing over Naomi and Aaliyah. Uh, we got Bugamora defeating Los Lotharios because our Intercontinental Champion. No, no, Canada. it was just it was just Shinsuke versus Angel Garza. Really? Yeah, it was just a singles match. Okay, well, Shinsuke beat half of Los Lotharios. For some reason, because Los Shame. Lotharios, uh, a tag team, are feuding with the Intercontinental Champion. By the way, I, I know we're not there, but I'm, I just want to spit the, the the name change. That's just fucking dumb. You don't like that? No, I don't Definitely. like it. No. What would you like them to be? Just Angel Garza and Umberto Carrillo. Like no, fight. see, I hate when they have tag teams and tag teams don't have a tag team name. If they're going to be a tag team, give them a tag team name. They so were the most handsome tag, until... the most handsome tag team in all of WWE. That is a mouthful. And They're normally mouthful. I don't mind a mouthful, but that was a mouthful. <laughs> I'm going to need you. I'm going to give you to the end of the show to come up with a better name than Los Lotharios. All right. Take some time. Think about it. Uh, we got a Shotzi and Sasha backstage promo. Shotzi's still pissed that Sasha screwed her over. Does the bitch line, but gets stopped. Uh, Sasha says she's still the captain and she's still rich. So he says after your match. I want you guys to shake hands, be on the same page because you have to be for Survivor Series. Sasha beats Shotzi. Sonya comes out on the ramp, waits for Shotzi and Sasha to shake hands. Sasha picks Shotzi up, sticks her hand out. Shotzi shakes it. And then that shady, shady motherfucker backstabs, gives the bank statement to Shotzi Blackheart. Literally backstabs the most beautiful woman in SmackDown. Shotzi Blackheart and broke my heart. Shame on Sasha Banks. And Shotzi's um, back. Yeah, especially after Shotzi made her look like a million bucks. Like, what the fuck? Uh, apparently, Zia Lee is a comic book character now. Uh, we got a comic, like, so they killed. I don't know if you guys heard this, but they Mei Ying is no longer a thing. I don't know if uh, Bukaki Boa. Boa is still going to be a thing or not, but Mei Ying is no longer a thing. Karen Q is getting a makeover and a new name and Blah 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 blah. So Mei Ying, uh, all that shit dead and gone. So well, it doesn't fit with new NXT 2.0. It just doesn't yeah, fit. I, I guess. Uh, so apparently now we're gonna go uh, and get rid of all of that stuff for Zia Lee too. So they did this whole comic book backstory about uh, a landlord taking away their family stuff and her fighting back for her father who passed away to protect her family, and she is the protector, Zia Lee. Um. Yeah, no one's going to protect her in three months when she's being released for budget cuts, too, because they change up her gimmick. But neither here nor there. Too soon? Yeah, you're going to hurt Katie's feelings. I'm sorry. That's that's what I that's what I thought of. I'm like, well, she's going to be on the chopping block to be the first people on the batch of releases in three months. I didn't this- like that. I didn't like that. I just it felt like it was thrown together last to minute, too. It felt like it was like thrown together like a, a, a days, a few days before that, I'm like, we're changing up the gimmick. Do something comic book wise. I don't know how long it takes to make that comic book panel, but it looked like they put a little bit of work into it. So, no, the com the comic book was fine. It's just the story they came up with. The story was dumb. Like the comic yeah. book stuff would have been interesting if they actually had an interesting story to go with. You it. guys, you guys can talk about that when we get to spits because I'm assuming you both are spitting that. We still got a couple more things. Uh, we got a Tony interview. All she wants is her title shot. Charlotte says that you can have a match, but you can't have one for the title. Uh, we'll talk about that after Survivor Series. Then in our main event, King Woods calls out Roman Reigns. Roman comes out, and then you see one wet bandit fly, and then another wet bandit fly, and out comes Big E doing what you're supposed to do for Survivor Series, showing up and attacking people, not in a sanctioned bout. Uh, Big E and Roman go at it. They brawl. Roman gets stomped out by E and Woods. Then... Uh, the bloodline come in. They take out the bloodline. Roman comes back in. Superman punch spear lays out Big E as we go off air. 
Roman's standing tall. Uh, what are we swallowing from SmackDown? Or do you guys want to do spits first? Because we can we can do spits first. You guys can spit the comic book thing. Doesn't really matter. Okay, JJ. what are we swallowing then? Okay. Did you want to go first? Or... Y'all gonna be mad at me and how I'm my sleep schedule. I woke up. And... <laughs> I went out earlier today. I took a picture of a of a business tower that does these little corny jokes. I woke up probably like eight thirty five, but it said on the tower, "How do you cut a Roman emperor's hair with seasons?" Oh. With. <laughs> <laughs> but it made me think of Roman. That's the only reason why I took a picture of it because it made me think of that. I know it's corny. I like corny jokes. Um, so, yeah. so does my wife. She'll appreciate that. Uh, are you? I'm, I'm assuming that means you're swallowing Roman and no. the bloodline stuff. No. No. You're really? not swallowing Roman. I know people are going to be mad about this, but I'm over the bloodline stuff. It's uh, it it's lost its luster to me. I'm ready yeah. for something. Yeah, I know. I yeah. know. It's, are are you swallowing anything from SmackDown? I'll small, I'll, I'll small, I'll small, I'll small, I'll small, 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 Becky is going to come over to SmackDown and she's going to go against Shots. I'm calling no. it now. Like I called Naomi and Sasha. I mean, uh, Karen DeVille and, Sa- and Naomi. Like I called that. Becky going to come over to SmackDown and she's going to go to Shots. I'm calling it. No. <laughs> but I will um, also swallow that segment. It was uh, it, really good. I Even though Shotzi took the L, I love seeing Shotzi mix it up with Sasha. I love seeing Shotzi in this position. Uh, I hate the fact that she doesn't have the fucking tank, uh, mm-hmm. but she still looks damn good with or without it. Yeah, the uh, the match was very fan. It, it was the, probably the best match of the the entire night. Uh, I want to go ahead and um, swallow the the new day bloodline stuff, everything from start to finish. It, I, that's the one consistent thing that that SmackDown does is they start with a story. Done. I wasn't done. Oh, what else you swallow? I thought you were. Went on a rant about that. I wasn't done. <laughs> you just got you just got a little bit of wife mode right there. So I apologize. We get used uh, to just jumping back and forth between each other with swallows. So I, yeah. Um. Who else? The Seamus. The she- anything with Seamus. I swallow Seamus because I ain't seen Seamus in a while. So I swallow. So, so like. I know I'm not living the gimmick anymore, but I think the gimmick helped me really appreciate the man because god damn I miss Seamus. See, I, see? I, I just had to see honest, him in a while. You appreciate folk when you don't see him in a while. I miss, I appreciate honest, I honestly got to miss Seamus and I loved everything Seamus and I and I love that Rich Holland now has my gimmick and is using it on the main roster. Like he's prospering on the main roster. Like the one few, the one call up that's prospering. I wouldn't be, call it whoa, prospering, whoa, 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 but whoa. I wouldn't call it prospering. He's with Seamus. He's going to prosper. Seamus prospers. Know. Rich Holland is going to prosper there. by association. No, I'm going there. Prosper by association. I'm with JJ. I, I will not say there. prospering, but he's okay. he's there. He's there. He's getting TV time, which is more than I can say for Ricochet on a consistent basis. That's not Ricochet just had a damn good match in that fit of four way that he lost. (coughs) Yeah. Um, What else? What else? Sonia. I'll give Sonia her credit this one time. One time. She gets, she, because she encouraged something positive, which Sasha flipped it and turned something else. She did give something good. So I'll give her that one thing. This needs to go somewhere with her, though, for me, because yes, or else it's just going to run dry. You can't keep dragging this thing out like her and Naomi need to get to somewhere after Survivor Series fairly quick. Yeah, I know we're not going to get a pay-per-view in December. We're not getting one till New Year's Day. So maybe there, hopefully. But within this next month, we need to get that match on the books ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, Anything else, JJ? trying to remember what else i think that may be it that's all i remember right now yeah yeah that's all i got right now 
Uh, I'm swallowing I'm... Tony being on uh, Team SmackDown, taking yeah, Aaliyah's yeah. spot. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, because I know where, where everybody was going with, uh, where I thought, where everyone thought I was going to go with this, but I was actually happy for Aaliyah that she got her first win in WWE. I don't know if it was being out it of the structure. It took 35 years. It took 35 years. I don't know if it's the structure outside of NXT, but Samantha and Aaliyah don't hate, don't like, but don't despise like I did on NXT. She, so. she didn't learn anything in NXT. That's for me. It just it it shows that she didn't soak up what she learned in her thirty five years in NXT. Thirty five years. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna swallow the bloodline as well. Uh, Tony, Shotzi, and Sasha. Um, yeah, that's, that's really about it. Uh, what are yeah. we spitting from SmackDown? I want to spit it, but I want to talk about it. Just happy Corbin and Jeff Hardy and Matt Cat. No, spit it, spit, spit it. it, spit it, but we're not talking about it. Just yeah, it needs it. to be spat, just not talking about it. Um, what the hell, whatever it is that they're doing with Sammy, which is nothing, it's just kind of confusing. Um, the was fact he that they show tonight, yeah, he was just kind of like, in, like in the backstage segment that was like throwaway stuff. Um, I want to spit the fact that they're not really doing anything with Shinsuke and Nakamura. Like, why aren't they building? That's another champion versus champion match, and it they're treating Shinsuke and Nakamura like he's an afterthought. And Damian Priest is now demonic when he's really really mad. And it just kind of feels like a foregone conclusion that Shinsuke is going to lose that match, which just sucks. Also, Cesaro didn't win. Uh, I wish Cesaro and Sheamus could have won. Not possible. It, in an ideal world, Mac, uh, Baron Corbin gets taken out for Cesaro. Okay. In an ideal world. Baron Corbin will be off TV for a while. You know what? I, I loved me some Baron Corbin. Like, Constable Baron Corbin was actually very entertaining. Bum-ass Baron Corbin was hilarious to me, but this happy Corbin shit is trash. 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 You got any other spits, JJ? <laughs> <laughs> no. Not right now. All right, so I'm with you. Uh, Jeff Hardy, Mad Cat Moss, all that gone. Um, Masura. Yeah, that's really, really all I got. Uh, I, I didn't really give a shit about Los Lotharios and Bugamora, uh, the singles match. Uh, oh, I'm spitting the fact that there has been basically no build to the Survivor Series, that yes. the teams didn't show up to fight, that there wasn't an invasion no from Raw on SmackDown or anything like it that. It wasn't a go-home. It wasn't a go-home before the pay-per-view. Literally, it was just Big E and then the Usos. Kind of kind of hard to really, like, go to bat for your, for your brand, like brand supremacy when you were on the opposite brand three weeks ago. Like, literally, if you go down the roster... Everyone was either on an XC or on the opposite show. Well, technically, like- they've been on the same brand for six weeks. It's just it didn't take effect for three weeks. So let's not go into it. Let's not go into it because it's going to be a whole wormhole of sh- <laughs> it it, it's, it's, uh, it's- overall SmackDown Spitter Swallow. Swallow. Spit. Still a good show. SmackDown is still consistently my favorite WWE program every week. Okay. Mostly because of Roman and Sasha. And Seamus. I'm a shots at a match. I'm gonna swallow. Yeah, there's there you go. There you go. That's all you need. Um Rampage. Uh we kicked it off with Darby Allen defeating Billy Gunn, and then the Gun Sons attack Darby, and then Sting makes the save and gets dropped by Mr. Ass. Uh QT Marshall challenges CM Punk to a match in Chicago, and then CM Punk accepts and says, Bring all of your friends because you're too boring to fight me by yourself. Uh, Ethan Page Facts. and Scorpio Sky disappoint us with the news that American Top Team is not gone. They will be back, and I'm sad. Uh, Jade defeats Red Velvet to move on in the TBS title tournament. And in our main event, Cole and Fish lose to Jurassic Express when Bobby Trash. Fish taps out to the snare trap. Trash. That's terrible. I'm glad I chose to watch the Bulls games instead of. Uh, oh, Rampage. and 
Chris Jericho, who apparently fucked some dude on Reddit's wife and has a very small penis, was on uh, commentary. commentary all night with Ricky Starks, and I don't understand why Ricky Starks is doing commentary. He's an actor. Rampage is weird. Rampage is weird. Like he'll randomly have random commentators on there, and it just throws it's me off. Mostly been Jericho and Ricky Starks lately, and I thought it was going to be Mark Henry, and instead he's an interviewer. So like I don't know what's going on. It's it's so weird because like it isn't like the weekly Mark Henry interview before the main event. That's like lame. Yeah. What's lame? Bit. Are we swallowing anything from Rampage? Uh, the fact that the Bulls won and they beat the Denver Nuggets. That's a that's a huge swallow. Uh, because that's what the the entire episode of Rampage was was the third and fourth quarter of the Chicago Bulls game for me. Okay, JJ, you swallowing anything from Rampage? Jade and Red Velvet. Okay, I'll give you that. And uh, um. The little Sam. I thought QT Marshall was going to be going against Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson's a heel now, and didn't he? Didn't he challenge him on uh, Dynamite? No, no. So CM Punk challenged, or QT challenged CM Punk, and Danielson challenged Colt Cabana. Oh, okay. That's because why. Colt that's Cabana why. is a hometown boy from Chicago. It is interesting that Colt and CM Punk are both having matches on Dynamite next week, neither here nor there. Uh, some interesting blood between those two. Wonder how that's going backstage. Mm-hmm. They got a Curious. history. Curious. Um, I'm spitting everything but Red Velvet and Jade, and I'm really like it was. It was a fine match. It was. It was good. It wasn't like didn't blow my mind. It was a Jade match. She got the win. Um, I could see red velvet putting on a better match with someone else but you got to get jade over so yeah uh, i was swallow i was on my canadian friend's uh, stream doing a watch log i was swallow that he played ue theme when they came out before the match okay that's the only thing i swallowed hey you know what i i can swallow uh Fish and Cole versus Jurassic Express. That was a damn good match. It was fun. So I don't know if I would call it like if that's something I want to see in a main event, but no, no. Dynamite has terrible main events. Like literally, like that's the Rampage. one critic Rampage. No, no. I mean, a, I meant to say AEW in general, like Dynamite and Rampage, like they start the shows off uh, fine. Halfway through, it's solid and then the main event it's just some random tag match that you just don't care about how many or times do we end jay lethal versus sammy guevara yes two yeah two guys that we're not going to talk about just like majority of uh wwe's matches end up in a roll-up well they yeah. they in a roll-up fair point jj fair point um i'm spitting rampage overall uh, there wasn't enough there to make me really enjoy the show. I'm I'm a swallow because the Bulls won the match, uh, won, won their game after that terrible loss against the Blazers on Wednesday, so they need that bounce back win, especially after the two back to back wins against the Lakers and the Clippers. So this is a definitely swallow for me. Have they beat the Pacers yet this year? Uh, I, they haven't played the Pacers yet this year, but they should play them next year. Don't I mean, next me. year, next week, next week, Jesus. I only gargle because Jade. I got two black women on my TV. That's the only reason why I gargle. There, there's that. Fair there's that. Uh, what was everyone's favorite show this week? Dynamite. Raw. Dynamite was the best show this week. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. They get, they teased the me with CM Punk. I it, and it's not because they were here. It was actually decent. Uh, they tease the they tease CM Punk for MJF. They're finally gonna give CM Punk an actual story. I do be, believe this is gonna be like an actual program. Heal Brian Danielson's fantastic. That whole opening segment was fantastic. Kenny Omega being gone, great. Adam Cole like teasing friction there. Um, just everything else sprinkled in between was great. Like Tomohiro Ishii and Orange Cassidy versus Botcher and Bland. Like I just like seeing some some of my new Japan guys that I watch that I like on my television screen. And then obviously uh, Sheeta versus Nyla Rose was a fantastic match. That was that should if Dynamite was a one hour show and they closed off with Sheeta versus Nyla Rose, 
best one hour of wrestling all week. That you look so cool. Um, what else did they give me? What else they rent? Oh, and then the the tag match, the acclaimed versus Don, Dante Martin and uh, Leo uh, Leo Rush, fantastic match. <laughs> and I'm warming up to the acclaim. So, I know my best show of the week. As, as happy as I am. Your that Vince is, is enjoying all... AEW, and I am very happy. Um, <sighs> after the ridiculousness that just went on right here, uh, NXT was the best show of the week. Sure. Uh, <laughs> because I'm not putting Raw over just for being in Indiana or putting on. No, I'm not either. I'm not I know either. you you enjoyed it, and that's fair. I, I'll give you that, but I can't agree with Raw. Raw is, it, it went NXT, SmackDown, Raw for me. So Raw was at the bottom of the WWE shows. Rampage was lowest and Raw was just above it. Um, It'll be another I, three months before I watch Raw, but hey. Yeah, Raw's it kind of. I, I almost went with Dynamite, uh, but then I remembered it was Night of the Garbage Tag Teams when you started mentioning all the garbage tag teams uh, in all those matches, like Batram Bland and the Acclaimed and 2.0. So, like, no. They, gonna, they, uh, they gave me 80 percent of the show was roster members that i care about on dynamite have cared about in new japan for wrestling wwe or other wrestling promotions that's fair so yeah. for jj the best show was raw uh for the host of the straight talk podcast it was aw dynamite and yes. for smacking it raw which is where we are it was nxt so uh nxt was the best show of the week uh vince how do you want to start this Survivor Series team uh, announcement so, thing? So it's uh, just our dream Survivor Series team. Team JJ versus Team Vince versus Team Matt. Uh, that's how we're going to go about it. Uh, we can let either one of us starts with the women's team and then we do the men's team or vice versa. Well, uh, you, and, you and I had a very interesting conversation when we were talking about this because I, I had like do you want to do a poll to see what who everyone because we talk about how i don't win polls very often because i have a refined taste and everyone else likes fast food wrestlers i wouldn't um, win i wouldn't win so no okay uh well we could do a poll but i'm more interested to see what everybody everybody's dreams to fire series team would be for men's and women so use the hashtag smack and raw and tweet at us all year and or like tag us on instagram your survivor series teams that's what i really like to do is create some hype for one of my favorite shows of the year because i like the brands warfare thing they just hasn't been any brand or warfare to deal with this year so oh, i forgot they I, also mentioned that now it's the one time of year that champions go head to head in well, wwe they're technically wrong still there yeah, but now they hear another uh how about since uh, it's my since i came up with the idea i'll start us off with the women's one then jj can go since she's our guest mac can cap us off and then cool. with the men's team jj or mac can start it off and then i'll top it off okay. how's that okay. all right yeah, so starting off with my team captain of course has to be the one and only sasha banks if you guys didn't know i was gonna go with sasha banks this is my first pick on my dream survivor series women's team you have not been watching me on the show or following me on any social media platforms. Uh, following that is Io Shirai because she's my second favorite women's wrestler in all of WWE. This might raise some eyebrows, but I'm putting Nikki Bella number three because I love me some Nikki Bella. She's my favorite Bella twin, and I think she's underappreciated. She worked really hard. She's never going to be a workhorse like like a lot of these like women wrestlers are right now. But she transitioned from Divas era to current era. She she busted her ass to get good. And I enjoy her in Total Divas. And then Total Bellas. So I like her. She's always been one of my favorites. Uh, AJ Lee. Uh, I thought she was kind of like the CM Punk of the women's division back in the day. And to this day, I really would wish to see her back in the ring. See her in the match with either Bailey or Sasha Banks. So that'd be very interesting. The fifth one, I kind of toyed around with going back with another old school like wrestler or current wrestler. I was leaning towards Trish Stratus, but in the end, like I want to lean more towards Tony Storm because I like Tony Storm more and I want to bring the thunder to my team. Cool. JJ? Okay. Mine is in no particular order. But, but you got to list the captain, though. Who's your captain, though? The captain will be Trish Adora. Okay. Then I have Awesome Kong, Charlotte, Thunder Rosa, and Layla Hirsch. Okay. All right. Why'd you pick uh, Trisha Dora as your captain? 
because I wanted a black woman. <laughs> Fair, that's perfectly. I was just curious as if there was something more to it. Um, my <laughs> team captain is going to be Lita. Um, I knew she was going to be on the list. And we're talking early 2000s Lita. Uh, she is going to be the veteran of this team, obviously. Um, one of the first female wrestlers as a wrestler I fell in love with. Need to have her on the list. Uh, the rest of the list should not be a surprise at all. Uh, we have Shotzi Blackheart. Okay. We have Paige. We have the most current version of Alexa Bliss. And to round out my team, the devil's thickest demon, Abaddon. Uh, that's funny. Um, well, question. Uh, I'll let you guys... Uh, I'll, I'll I'll ask to see if you guys will allow it. I I for, completely forgot about it because my original fifth member was going to be Kylie Ray, but I wasn't sure if we were sticking to WWE or not. But seeing that we're not, if, if you, you guys will, make, uh, if you want to make Kylie Ray your fifth over Tony Storm, you can do that. Yeah, it's Miley. Yeah. So as much as I love Tony Storm, uh, kicking her out and putting uh, Kylie Ray, uh, smiling Kylie Ray. Yeah. yeah. Plus she's yeah. Chicago's own. Chicago's yeah. own. Got to support my yeah. own. Indy Bailey deserves a spot. It's all good. Stop it. Stop it. Um, okay. Solid team. Solid team. Uh, JJ, do you want to kick things off with your men's team and your team captain? Yeah. And my team captain is different because there was a period where I was learning about Smoky Mountain Wrestling during the summer. So Dirty White Boy is my captain. Okay. Big E, Jimmy Snuka, Stone Cold, and Evil Uno. I need to know who Dirty White Boy is because I'm not familiar with Dirty White Boy. Me either. I thought you were okay. talking about Matt. Um, early 90s. Early 90s. It was the Smoky Mountain Wrestling. I was watching this on a, a another Canadian friend's Twitch channel. And yeah. I was watching that during the summer. And it was Dirty White, Dirty White Boy and Ric Flair. Not there's another Ric Flair out there. Those two kind of caught my attention. Okay. Uh, I don't think my team is going to be a surprise whatsoever. Uh, my team captain is the only person to successfully lead a faction in this entire group. One of the greatest factions of all time, the Ministry of Darkness. It is mm. The Undertaker. Uh, and his team will be rounded out by The Fiend Bray Wyatt, Alistair Black, Dexter Loomis, and The Icon Sting. Can't say I'm surprised what any of those selections uh sting i wasn't anticipating i don't know why sting wasn't in, in my in my brain but makes sense makes sense uh for me obviously my team captain is john cena i feel like as a team captain you need someone that's a true leader and sends out daily inspirational tweets to all his teammates so leading up up to survivor series john cena will be personally dming inspirational dms to every single one of his team members to solidify this team and just no one screams continuity more than john cena he's been the same character for 20 plus years um the the what, what's the, the ace of the team i guess would be eddie guerrero he is probably one of the best in-ring technicians of his time and of all time uh sorry sheamus don't compare uh, plus you need someone that's willing to cheat, go the extra length, bend the rules a little bit for your team. Maybe distract the referee. Maybe bring in a weapon. You, you need a Neta Guerrero. You also need a high flyer, someone that can, that can just go ahead and just throw everybody off, change the pace. So that's why I'm throwing Rey Mysterio in there as my number three guy. Plus there's tag team chemistry with Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio because they've been tag team champions before. They're basically brothers. Um, so Ray Mysterio coming in, changing up the pace. I feel like that's that's very fantastic because John Cena is a powerhouse. He's going to slow down the game. Eddie Guerrero can kind of like go with whatever needs, but he can also cheat. Ray Mysterio is going to pick up the pace. And then number four is CM Punk because you need a striker. You need someone that's going to like hype up the entire team. Kind of, kind of like in the rally, like before a championship game in sports, you need someone that's in the huddle hyping everybody up. And I feel like that's CM Punk. He'll drop a pipe bomb and just make everyone just more motivated for this match. And finally, you need a powerhouse, an ace. Like 
a guy that you can just throw in there. Like AJ said, you need a Hulk. And my Hulk is Kane. Specifically, evil, crazy, demonic Kane, where he was over here electrocuting people and setting people on fire. Early 2000s Kane, best Kane. That's my top five. That's my Survivor Series team. I'm going to change one. Okay. Evil Uno for Chris Bay. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. I I had an alternate Survivor Series team uh, that I thought everyone would enjoy. Would you like to hear what my alternate men's Survivor Series team is? Yes, yeah. by all means. Uh, so the captain could only be one person. Uh, it is Chicago's own, uh, should have been world heavyweight champion, but was underappreciated, D'Lo Brown, um, leading, uh, leading the charge with the greatest frog splash in the game. Uh, also, now that I live in Elgin, uh, we have Elgin Zone, David Otunga, Harvard graduate, got to be on the show. Of course, Chicago Zone, CM Punk. Uh, to back up the style of a D'Lo Brown, we've got Montez Ford as well. Another high flyer, another beautiful frog splash. And last but not least, uh, the son of Kurt Angle, Jason Jordan, in my Chicago uh, Survivor Series team. That is still dumb. okay. Interesting. I like the fact that it's mostly a black team with CM Punk in there. It is 100%. <laughs> Interesting. Not bad. I think I like your alternate team more. Well, that's too bad because my other team's going to kick the shit out of any other team. Sure, 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 sure. Listen, with The Undertaker coercing everyone with the power of the urn and we saw what the power of the urn does if you okay. watch that new day if you watch that new day netflix series i have not but might do a special on that feud fueling the undertaker fueling the fiend fueling alistair black like no nobody's com- you can't you can't compete with that team it, it's unstoppable yeah okay fair point fair point uh jj would you like to tell everyone where they can find you if you want them to find you on the interwebs um you can find me on twitter at jj underscore ren r-e-n-n i don't do facebook too much i'm barely on twitter well excuse me i'm barely on instagram i think twitter is the only place right now Mm -hmm. kind of i don't remember my instagram so just (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> She'll probably J- tag the on the Instagram post when we post up this episode. Yeah, I'll tag it. Uh, yeah. You can right. also find her spamming emotes in random Canadian uh Twitch chats. Yeah. I do like Twitch. Twitch is fun. Twitch is Twitch. Um yes. well, but you love I have... my emotes. You love my emotes. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> uh in case you might have forgotten, since I haven't been here for two weeks, you can find me on all social media platforms at SES Events on Twitter and Instagram. On both my Instagram and Twitter bios, you will find the link tree to all my content, link tree slash SES Events, where not only can you find all my Instagrams, but the show, Straight Talk, where we've been unleashing a bunch of content. I've been the busy man. Uh, we finally got, I finally got around to editing that Dragon Ball Z podcast that lasted over two hours plus, and we just rambled about Dragon Ball Z, so that's very fun. Uh, featuring uh-huh. Matt Ritter. The I, believe, I believe you and I fought about Dragon Ball Z while Justin and Reek enjoyed it is more accurate. but That was towards the end, towards the end, because you kind of came in to help out Justin because you thought I was bullying him or something, but no spoilers, guys. Go listen to the episode. It was a fun listen. Go ahead and I'm like listen to, mute to me, Vince. Don't spoil you. You're, you're worse. You're worse than Tom Holland spoiling something that's gonna happen in a new Marvel movie. Jesus. Um, not only do we have the Dragon Ball Z podcast, but again with Matt, we have the new Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl preview podcast where we talk about the new games, whether we're hot or cold on them, and give our teams for the scene for the Sino region and you know talk about that we might do a review episode after playing through the game for a month or so so stay tuned for that on monday so on november 22nd i'm finally going to deliver on that roman reigns uh retrospective podcast that i've been doing how long will he reign featuring miss katie kinsey bay bay from the she Lee showcase where we talk about roman reigns title reign up until this point 
fantasy booking up until WrestleMania, who we think or who we would like to see take the title for Roman Reigns. So stay tuned for that. And then on this on November 29th and then on December 6th, two part podcast, Eastern uh, NBA, Eastern and Western Conference tier rankings with both members of Young Kings Wrestling. And I did a fantastic parody intro for them that they popped for. So go ahead and check that out at least the first five minutes if you only care about the intro that I gave them. So a lot of fun content coming up. And, and you can find on. the sh- oh go ahead. And you can obviously find uh the show on on Twitter and Instagram at Smackinaraw Pod. I run the Instagram, Matt runs the Twitter. You also got an episode of uh Inside the Mind of with Katie. Yeah, out, yes, where people yes. can get uh, inside that sick, twisted, demented little head of yours. Uh yeah, so I just want to say special thanks to Katie for inviting me to be on Inside the Mind of. Uh very gracious and grateful for the opportunity. It was it was fun. Honestly, it didn't mean it to get as deep as it got, but it got kind of deep and it was a lot of fun. So go ahead and check it out if you want to know a little bit more about me and not just the personality like the gimmick i live or quote unquote live because matt you won't live. you you don't live gimmicks I, you live the, if you live gimmicks Seamus would have been on your survivor series team didn't even make the cut anyway <laughs> uh you guys can find me on twitter at matt Ritter. there's that m-a-t-t-r-i-d-d-e-r also facebook.com slash group slash smack and raw vince already plugged the twitter and instagram for the smack and raw pod creation world is the banner under which we exist you guys can find them at creationworld.com Twitter and Instagram at the creation world, T H E C R E A T I A world and facebook.com slash creation world. I want to thank JJ for uh, basically telling me she was showing up and then showing up on the podcast. I appreciate mm-hmm. it. Uh, and watching wrestling this week as well. Cause yeah. I love interacting with JJ on Twitter and I like when she watches wrestling. So and thank I'm you for like, that JJ. Once I go back to work, I'm not going to be watching any more wrestling. You can watch both of them. Uh, Vince for showing up to work this week. Um, just a heads up for anyone who's listened this far. I have not decided if we were going to do a good Friday episode or not. So that is still up in the air. I may mm-hmm. take the week off and enjoy the holidays with my family. I may find myself free and with nothing to do and everyone in a food coma and decide, Hey, let me go talk about wrestling. So that's yeah. still up in the air. So I will let you know before next week, if there's going to be an episode next week or not, if not, we will see you on December 3rd uh, with down for the count uh, will be our guests. So Come Sweet. check us out there as well. Hopefully Vince will be there. I, I, I hope he had fun and wants to come back. Um, other than that, for the Pornhub Poppy, the Sultan of Spitter Swallow, Daddy Delgado, and JJ, who we need to get some nicknames for, I am the Warden Matt Ritter, the patron saint of both Pornhub and podcasting. You're also we, the same Prince of Pornhub. And the same Prince of Pornhub. We are Smackin' Raw, the number one wrestling podcast on Pornhub. There you go.